Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalids at Dawn. This is Shadow Fury 333 with the last exhibition match for today. And the last match for today, if that's not clear. Knuckle Base and Androgate on Wanderlust. This is the fourth game that they were playing. I've just updated the wins to reflect that, but yeah, it was the fourth game that they played in this series. Apparently they were doing a first three, and then got distracted by the 1v1, the 2v2 tournament. So they didn't quite... Well, apparently they were playing a first of three before the 1v1 tournament, sorry, the 2v2 tournament. And that was what was going on. So that was this whole thing. So yeah, this is this is the fourth match. So let's see how it goes. So Snuggle Base was already up two wins, and it could up one. So this is the game. So anyway, Jump Bots versus Cloaky Bot. Bit of a variance from the last one. The last one, of course, is Double Amphib, and that was basically just ducks with some scallops. No, boy, surprisingly. Now, Jumbot versus Cloaky is a weird matchup because Pyros, of course, are very powerful against Glaives, but at the same time, against a large number of Glaives, they start to falter. Of course, Zeus work well against Pyros more specifically, but then Moderators beat Zeus, so figuring out what to go for. And I know that the current metagame, or at least Aquanim, has been pushing a lot of Glaive and Tick micro, using that to beat Pyros, rather than using the Zeus and then being subject to the Moderators. A bit of a trickier strategy, but it is one that is a bit more reliable if you can pull it off. It's just that at that point, of course, placeholders still become a problem, and I think jacks become a bigger problem, too. You start to see jacks being built a lot more. Because they're not going to be stunned out or anything. Mind you, Zeus probably wouldn't stun them out regardless, but they're definitely not going to be stunned out by Glaives. But at this point, see, Wanderlust is a map where you basically either... You can start anywhere along the western or eastern sides. The place that Anarchid started... Sorry, Snuggle Base has started out, that's a bit more typical. And it gets started out in a slightly more defensive position, but one that's harder to expand from. You can get to this north side fairly easily, but that's about it. Whereas Snuggle Base, they can more easily expand along the entire western side. They can easily defend this section here. Anarchid is setting up over to the southeast, but they're going to have a harder time defending it from their main base. And the south and north, however, that's what Anarchid really is surprisingly not going for, but that's what they're next to. This star position has a much easier time taking the north expansion, similarly with the southwest and the south expansion. But yet, Anarchid isn't going for that, or at least, not yet. Which I find a little bit odd. But at any rate, I can kind of see why they're doing this. They basically would want to set up this entire eastern side, so they're jumping along. Like, they're skipping an expansion, and then going to an the next cluster of metal extractors, in order to build that and then expand back from there, after securing the territory. A risky move, but if it pays off, it pays off in spades. Or... I think that's the expression. Anyway, it does pay off very well, regardless. I imagine that being paid in spades would be a little bit disappointing. After the first one, you wouldn't really know what to do with them, except maybe store them. Although, on the other hand, if you had a spade-based currency, I mean, how would that work? Would you would be able to interchange heads and handles? And if I had one that had a second handle, like a grip handle, on top of the wooden shaft, like, could you separate that out, or would that be... Would that be considered defacing the currency? I suppose that's why it's a bad idea to pay people in spades. It just becomes confusing. And then, of course, the taxes are a problem, too. You just shave off parts of the handle, and I guess that might work. At any rate, everyone would have a lot of really weak spades. Oh, okay, okay. It's You're using it to shovel everything. That's what it's for. Spades aren't very good at shoveling, mind you. They're, they're more just for digging, actually carrying dirt, or in this case, cash. That's not as easy as it looks, or as it sounds. So anyway, Snuggle Base, actually in a bit of a tighter spot than I thought they'd be. I mean, no ticks yet, just Warrior and Glaive, and forced to retreat, but that's this is where the placeholder comes in, and the Pyro's unfortunately not far enough to make it matter. I think Pyro's and... do Pyro's and Warriors have the same range? I think they do. Or very near. Close enough as to make no difference. And it looks like... Yeah, 280 elements for fire versus 270 elements for the warrior's attack. So the placeholder actually doesn't help that much. Helps against Glaive, but not against Warrior. And this is where Jack, I suppose, would come in. But then Jack's so expensive. Jack, I think, yeah, 600 metal each. Definitely where it would come in. It's just surprisingly difficult. Wow, Anarchid's really showing how to... Play Cloaky versus Jumpbot. I'm still surprised that there's no. I mean, the placeholder I can see. That's that would be the thing I do. 
It's just Jack is going to have a much easier time dealing with these lighter units. But at this point, Anarch had converted that into territory. Snuggle Base, they've expanded, which is good. That's what they want to do. But even then, they haven't really built up much. I guess they're trying to figure out what to build. Because, I mean, at this point, what do you build? Really? I mean, placeholder moderator is the combo that's meant to happen. And that would work well against the Warriors. That would just destroy Warriors. But Warriors are not commonly seen in this matchup because of that. That was actually a really weird and kind of meta-breaking thing. It, Anarchid was not playing to the meta right there. At all. And I think that's what threw off... Okay, none of the Warrior coming in. I think that threw off Snuggle Base. Because they were not expecting to see a Warrior and I guess weren't quite sure how to deal with it. Yeah, Moderators are totally how you do it. But that's what they're for. They're for Zeus, primarily, but also will help against Warriors. Which is why you never see Warriors, because everyone builds Moderators. But now with the Glaze being built as the primary way of countering Pyros, Moderators aren't built anymore, which means Warriors have a bit of a room to actually breathe. Which is surprising. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's meta shifts for you. Like, Aquinum just went for the Glaives, and then turns out that that means Warriors are useful. At any rate, Aquinum has converted that into a fairly large advantage, though Snuggle Base wisely using that reclaim to avoid making that advantage go too far away from them. At this point, they're still at parity, thanks to Snuggle Base's reclaim. They still have a good minute or so of that, I think. Let's see, plus five? Oh yeah, they've easily got a good minute. At plus five. I think 300 metal there, that's 60 se Oh, it's actually a little over 60 seconds, 340. That's 68 seconds, in fact, of metal at that rate. So they really need to be... Well, actually, they don't need to push that yet. They have storage. They're good. Anarchid has not been building caretakers or building... Or they have one caretaker, but is it too far away? I think it might be. I can't see its range. But I think the caretaker might actually be too far away. Because that caretaker right there... That would have been very helpful for these sides. And that size would have been very helpful to get rid of this Firewalker. But at the moment, it's not exactly happening. And Snuggle Base is able to claw their way back in, thanks to the Reclaim and thanks to the Firewalker. Another good choice. I just wasn't sure about recommending it just because, well, it's expensive. 900 metal a piece. But at the same time, if you can make it work, the Firewalker works and the Firewalker works. So at this point, Anarchid just lost a lot of data about... Snuggle Base's base, but they, they had radar on the center of the map. They knew exactly what's going on, and even with the radar they have, I think they still have pretty much perfect information. They basically know where everything is right now. But these sides have got to be careful. They want that Firewalker and that Firewalker alone. And nice reactions from Anarchy. They are paying attention, but they are going to lose one scythe. Two scythes, never mind. But the last one can come in and deal with this. That's going to be six hits. Oh, not quite. Although, friendly fire, that pyro, that treasonous pyro, multiple treasonous pyros, getting rid of a placeholder as well. So, all Anakin had really had to do was put the pyros in the right path. Those sides barely even did any damage. They just put everything else in the right path for the pyros to kill them. No, no, I... Yeah, Aquinum, Anarchy is pointing out that in the chat, Aquinum was the first person I saw to go for the Glaive Tick strategy, and Anarchy seems to be just taking that, deciding, oh, well, the meta's shifted so that Glaives are the popular choice, which means moderators aren't being used very much, so I can go for Warriors, and that's free. So far, they've been right. Although the Firewalkers are a bit of a thorn in that side, it's still no moderator. So they're not wrong. I mean, the, it has been working. And the main thing is that Anarchy has been building up this entire time, and Warrior coming in along the south, there needs to be two, or these Glaives need to come in. There are too many Lotuses here, I don't think Anarchy is aware of this. No, Anarchy is not aware of this, or if they are, they're, they've forgotten. At any rate, once they become aware of this, they'll realize they can't attack here, or if they were aware of this, that's why the Warrior is retreating. Because there are too many Lotuses there to attack directly, with one Warrior. Two Warriors would be fine, but one Warrior is not enough. Actually, three Warriors I would recommend. And Firewalker is up again, and not in range. It will need to wait a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what Anakin needs to do. Throw in the Glaze as fodder so the warrior can get in and deal the damage. 
But at this point, they're actually got a f they have a free path to the main base. Not gonna take it though, instead gonna try to break down everything in the meantime. Or the mean space, I guess. Well, once again, another Firewalker attack on a defender line. Which really isn't doing that much damage. All things considered, it hasn't slowed down Snuggle... It hasn't slowed down Anarchid any. Like, Anarchid's basically just been distracting Snuggle Base with those defenders, while Snuggle Base has been losing stuff around the map. They've been losing units around the map. They've been... Although at this point, what with the Pyros out of the way of the Firewalker, it's going to be harder to kill. The size won't be very useful now. Because the Pyros aren't there to die with it. Or to kill it, rather. They aren't there to treasonously murder the Firewalker. So that scythe is not going to have much of an effect. And actually, nice shot. A bit lucky, but hey, that lucky shot worked out. Stopping the scythe in its tracks. And I believe revealing it, too. Yes! Yes, it... Oh, no, it might have... Should have revealed it. Regardless, it will be suicide for that scythe to attack. But the scythe goes to attack and commits suicide. Although... Wait, what? It's being, is it being blocked by... Yeah, it's being blocked by the Firewalker on one side and the Mountain on the other. This Lotus can't hit. These two Lotuses are blocked by the Firewalker. And once again, Treasonous Pyro is coming in here, getting rid of another Firewalker before they get rid of the Scythe. So yeah, Pyros. They're as much of a threat to you as they are to your opponents. And Anakin once again with the Machine Gun Commander, but that's not that relevant. I mean, it's good, Riot, it's what you want, but still... At this point, Snuggle Base is just... They're losing units left and right other than the Pyro. The Pyro is the only thing they've been losing that hasn't been killing itself. Or being killed by friendly fire. That's been it. Everything else has been friendly fire. That's the only way that there's been that much damage dealt by Anarchid. But hey, that's part of the matchup. That's the thing. That's part of the Jumpbot matchup. It's part of the Jumpbot factory. You can take advantage of that and use it against them. Anarchid has been managing to do that. Anyway, Snuggle Base, with their commander down, that will probably break them. It's, look at the economy right now. Snuggle Base is so far behind. I mean, Anarchid's two kills on those Firewalkers, they weren't bad choices. It's just, you have to be careful with the Pyros. Like, using Pyro as a support force, a Moderator would be a better support force when you have the place, placeholders. If you are trying, if you have Firewalkers nearby. Especially after the second scythe. Or, hang the Pyros back. Wait until the scythe is done. Like, hang them back, put them onto hold position. Or, yeah. Make them hold position, and then after the after the placeholder blob is over, or after the fire if it, if the firewalker dies, after that's done, then walk in and kill the scythe. Because by that point, you might also be able to get moderators up or other anti well, not anti mass units, like single unit, single target shot units, because that's what you need in that situation where you have an enemy. With a friendly. Instant hit single target shot is exactly what you need, and that's exactly what the moderator gives you. But at any rate, this is basically it. At this point, Anarchids managed to get a large enough advantage that, given that Snuggleways hasn't really changed up much, I mean, they added the Brawler, which is alright. Against the, it does put the Rapiers back, but it's going to be tricky. These sides coming in here, getting rid of the very thing that was their best friend, betraying their best friend, the Pyro, or Lotuses. Lotuses work too. I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised the Lotuses did not hit that last time. That was weird. But yeah, at this point, Anarchid just has everything they need. They have, I mean, they have what they need. They have their they have the snipers to get rid of anything the scythe would encounter, get rid of the placeholders. Lotus worked out well. They have the... Well, they have the... The rapiers are more of a matter of where they can get into position, because those brawlers and, and... And... The brawlers and archangels are stopping them. Actually doing a lot of damage. But even then, it's just... They're not making cost. And they're not deterring anymore, either. The rapiers, yeah, they're getting hit, but they don't care. That's not their concern. Except for that one. It probably is very concerned. At any rate, that's probably game. I don't see Snugglebase getting out of this. They are so far behind economically. They 
have some type counter with the Archangels, which is good. If they can hit that Sniper and Scythe with the Brawlers, they'd be okay. But they don't even know it's there. Um, oh, now they do. There we go. Now I might, might be able to get rid of that. Yeah, also no Tridents. What the heck? That would be the way to go, but at the same time, that got rid of the Sniper and the Scythe. And with a Jack coming in here, that Jack is, like I said, the thing they needed to build a while ago. In order to help get rid of the Glaives, because the Glaives is going to try to attack and the Jack can just tear him apart. And especially with the that support in the air, this might turn around. Or not. Never mind. That that would have been nice, but yeah, it looks like that's not going to help as much. And Anarchid with the with the razors, a little late, but good enough. Quite a few razors, in fact. All along this side, just making sure that there's no way those brawlers can get out of the base. But yeah, that's... Like, the jacks will help against the warriors, and then that will allow for a little bit of harassment coming out. But the trick, of course, is going to be dealing with everything that comes in, like the size. That's a little surprising just how much size I've been using this match. It's not as far as I know a matchup thing. Like, it's one of many options that's viable, but it's a good option. It's just that, in theory... Because I'm fairly certain Pyros, when they hit the... No, Pyros don't actually leave Napalm when they hit the ground, so actually that what does work. Because if Pyros left Napalm when they hit the ground, you could just have the Pyro attack ground and basically burn out an area. Like, have Pyros just constantly sweeping along, burning out areas like Outlaws do with the, with the shield burst. And they just burn out the area. I mean, you could do that anyway. But it would work better with the Napalm, so you just kind of go along a line. And even if you miss a particular section, the Scythe can't really run through it. But that would probably break a lot of other things and make Pyros way too powerful for their own good. And that was game! So yeah, actually, Anarchid ended up winning that game. <laughs> and I'm sure you thought that it was Snuggle Base that won, but nope, it was Anarchid. They won. They went 2-0, or 2-2 rather. And then apparently the tournament started so that they were done. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me. Oh, Scythe's an Anarchid thing. That's true. Anarchid loves their cloaked units. And I understand that a great deal. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone. Oh, actually, one more thing. Before I go, I'm not going to be here on Wednesday. I'm busy Wednesday and possibly busy Friday, so the next cast might be on Saturday. Maybe Tuesday? I don't know. I don't usually do Tuesday casts anymore, but there are some replays people want to see, so I might do that anyway. But yeah, Wednesday and Friday are not going to be on this week. Or at least Wednesday won't be. Friday might be. I'll see you about Tuesday, but no guarantees. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.